this video, I'm going to demonstrate a typical rotator cuff repair with a construct that we use in people who have good tendon mobility. So I'm looking in the, from the back of the shoulder. We'll clear off the bursal tissue to see the edges of the rotator cuff tear. Once that's done, I can assess the mobility of the rotator cuff tear to see how the tendon needs to reduce. In this case, I'm going to use what's called a self-punching anchor. This is going to be placed through a guide. Although the guide looks quite large in this camera view, it's important to note that the anchor here is only 2.6 millimeters in size, so it's smaller than a pencil eraser in terms of the diameter. This is placed directly into the bone against the edge of the humeral head or the ball. And I'll place two anchors, one toward the front of the shoulder and then one toward the back of the shoulder and these are placed just adjacent to the humeral head and at the edges of the rotator cuff tear. These anchors have sutures on them that can be passed through the rotator cuff. And we can use a variety of constructs, but in this case we have a set of suture tapes that are somewhat thicker. These help prevent pull through and protect the rotator cuff tissue. With this particular anchor, there's two sets of sutures. One is the tape-like set of sutures, and the other is a knotless mechanism that will help us create a low-profile repair. And then I'm going to create what's called a ripstop configuration, meaning that these other set of sutures are going to be slightly to the side of the tapes to help prevent any pull-through. So I'm shuttling these sutures through the rotator cuff, and then I'll repeat that in the front. So we'll place anchors from front to back and then pass sutures from back to front. With this particular type of anchor, I can link the constructs in a knotless mechanism. So there's a knotless mechanism within the body of the anchor itself. So the suture limb from the anchor in the back is being shuttled into the body of the anchor in the front. And then I'll repeat this process to create what's called a mattress configuration between the two anchors. This is just showing how that's shuttled because there's a shuttling suture within each anchor as well as the repair suture. I can then tension this down by pulling back and forth and then also using a knot cutter to apply additional compression. Then that suture limb is cut short. This will really help apply compression of the tendon down to the native bone bed to encourage healing. The other feature of this repair is by using these small anchors, you really get minimal violation of the footprint. Many anchors are four and a half to five, five point five millimeters in size but these are smaller to really help preserve the native bone. Those suture limbs are then taken out to two anchors on the lateral aspect in, and placed into the bone. This is a knotless anchor that's going into the bone that helps get fixation between the sutures and the anchor. We'll repeat that in the front. So we have a total of four anchors. You get this crisscross configuration that results in nice Compression of the tendon down to the footprint to encourage healing. We have a medial mattress to serve as a ripstop, and it's knotless and low profile, so minimal to no risk of mechanical impingement afterwards. Hopefully, that helps you understand this type of repair construct, and thank you for watching.